sometimes I feel like I find these great places to give examples of my thinking here and I want to tell you about this one this is an article and you see I I didn't save this article because sometimes I read an article and then don't think about something I want to say about it until afterwards and then I save a bunch of articles and I, I don't use them but anyway just tell this one you know whatever so the author is saying basically that you know she's complaining that you know you know that Trump campaigned on the promise to drain the swamp but really he's the largest swamp monster because first there's the Tom Price you know criticisms of like you know using private planes and chartered planes and expensive planes to fly everywhere and at taxpayer expense but furthermore for example the president's retreat major retreat to Mel Dar Largo um, or Mar del Largo, whatever it is. Anyway, as big as, as hot as digs, membership there has gone up to 200,000 a year, you know, twice as much ever since he became president. And its popularity has, has risen substantially and more and more people are going there. And foreign dignitaries from other countries are staying there and paying exorbitant prices to stay there. Now that's not going into the president's pocket now, is it? So anyway, she was saying that he's the biggest swamp monster of all, okay? And, and you know, and this isn't really about that, I mean, you know, whatever. But what this is about is that she then goes on to say, okay, that she's old enough to remember when McCain was running for president, and he couldn't remember how many houses he owned. And she said that she was able to remember when another presidential candidate flatly stated that 47% of Americans don't pay taxes. And then she goes on to say, look at the disconnect between, you know, these candidates and the lives of the major, you know, majority of Americans. And, you know, how could they possibly be elected? And she's not saying that those statements necessarily killed their presidential bids, but she says it didn't help them because it showed that they were so disconnected that there was no way they could be counted on to improve the lives of the average American or many average Americans. And now, this is where I come in. Hi. You know, I have no, I have no quarrel with any of this, but I want to point out to you that you can only run for president if you are that rich. I mean, there's no way to really run for president and not already be at those levels. You want to know why? Because even if you had it in your heart to, you know, really be there for the people, you're not going to speak the way they speak. I mean, you know, they're not going to accept you if you speak in slang, you have a heavy accent, and they're not going to accept you if you don't dress a certain way, and they're not going to accept you if you haven't been in the same clubs and driven the same cars and had the same experiences. They simply won't take you seriously. And if you don't have all that diplomatic background and experience in government, and how are you going to get all that experience in government? By being in government, and by being in government, they're going to give you money. And they're going to make you dress a certain way, you're going to talk a certain way, you have to toe a certain party line, people have to think you're respectable. You know, and what I'm trying to say is, is that no one would take a presidential candidate seriously who wasn't filthy rich of some form of status. I mean, compared to the 47% of Americans who don't pay taxes, no one would take anyone seriously who wasn't above that 47%, as they say. So the whole point of this very intelligent journalist and insightful journalist article is no and void because, you know, it's clearly evident that no one would really take seriously a candidate who didn't have those things. And so obviously none of the candidates we would take seriously are ever going to help anything. It's called clear, lucid, critical thinking about things that are taboo to think about. And, you know, so what I'm trying to say is, is that how can you write an article talking about the disconnect of candidates from the common people you know, presidential candidates from the common people, when the only people who could ever be presidential candidates have to be those kinds of people. The best you can say that the real presidential candidates are just people who've learned not to say those things, not that it's not true. And the reason I say this is because if you believe in an economic system so strongly that you think that how much money someone has is the equivalent to their worth as a person, 
then you could have a person who had skill, grace, insight, intelligence, conscience, and good heart with not, you know, just an average amount of money in the bank, and another person who had a lot, all those attributes, and, and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money, and of course, everyone's gonna assume that the latter is better. And that's why it's a fascist society.